Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Today we're going to walk across the sea of life with my guest, Alan Okubo. Mr. Okubo is a Hawaii lawyer who has been practicing law in Hawaii for about 40 years. However, during that time, he has also had an acting career in film, theater, and on television. Despite all the advertisements for lawyers and law firms that are broadcast every night on local television, Alan Okubo is probably the one Hawaii lawyer who is seen most often. Recently in commercials for Vacations Hawaii, Hawaii State Federal Credit Union, and Hemic, among others. Alan and I will discuss his dual roles and what he plays in them and what he has learned from performing on both stages. So, lights, camera, action. Welcome, Alan. Hello, Mark. How are you? Okay, fine. Good to see you. Same here. We, have, we haven't seen each other for one week. <laughs> well, I, I know you've been a lawyer in Hawaii for about 40 years, because so have I. Mm. And during that period of time, we've interacted quite a bit. Right. And I'd, I'd like to ask, first of all, before we go into your other roles, and the other plays that you've been in, how'd you become a lawyer? How did that, how did that happen? Uh, I don't know if people remember, but about 1973, state was running out of money. So I think it was a Sunday, George Ariyoshi was the governor at the time, and he had to balance the budget, otherwise the state was gonna shut down. So what he decided to do was he fired 600 teachers wow. on the Sunday so that Monday the state could run. I was student teaching at the time, so I said, it's not a good thing to do because by the time they hire the 600 back, it's going to be a couple of years before they're going to hire new teachers. So a friend of mine was saying, well, he was going to take the LSAT. I said, what's that? He said, well, it's so you can go to law school. I go, yeah, well, I will try to take it too. So took it. Didn't score very high, but I somehow got into Cal Western. So it worked out after that. So well, how times have changed. I mean, when you when you think about now, we need teachers mm. nowadays. Uh, I don't know if we need more lawyers. No, but uh, we we need we need teachers nowadays, and then I can't imagine them firing all those teachers. So at that point in, in your life, you figured this, there may not be a future in teaching. You, you, were, you thought you might want to be a teacher. And so you, you, you changed your course. It's mm. funny how events outside of our own lives will, will make the, our course and what roles we play change. I wanted to be a teacher because you get summers off, you get spring break, <laughs> you get Christmas break. I figured that's a good thing. You know? uh, Okay. I didn't factor in all the hard work you had to do in between. But, yeah, know. daily. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and now, um, so you, you, you decided to try law because a buddy su su suggested, mm. hey, give it a shot. And you ultimately went to law school. But during that time, were you involved in acting also? Uh, when I was at UH, I needed one more class. So I literally went through the whole catalog to look for a class that I didn't have to really study hard for. And I came across beginning acting. It said, no papers, no exams. So I called them. I said, is this true? No papers, no exams. They said, yes. I said, OK, sign me up. And I had no idea what I was going to get into. So I, that's basically how I got into it. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't have even gone into that direction. And prior to that, you, you had no, no yeah, idea, no yeah. thought? You weren't involved in a class play sometime? That Stage fright. I couldn't, can't, couldn't even give a speech. I stood there and I stammered. <laughs> <laughs> well, t times have changed. Now, now you do a lot of uh, acting mm. and you play a lot of roles. Give, what, what, give us some idea of what you've been doing in, in the acting uh, career. Uh, and, then, and then maybe, We'll go back and talk a little bit about your attorney career. 
Okay, well, when I first started, after I finished taking two classes at UH on acting, and most of the people were going to be theater majors, and they were, because you're a theater major, you go do plays, which takes two, three months. And I couldn't, I couldn't see doing that. So what I did was I called up Hawaii Five O. I said, uh, how do I sign up? So they said, come on down. So I went down there, filled up the paperwork. So I started working as an extra. On Hawaii Five O. Yeah. And that was with? Uh, Jack Lord. Jack Lord, wow, okay. Yeah, so that, that was how I got into the business, because uh, uh, Margaret Dovasola was the casting director at the time for extras, and then later on she became a uh, casting director for actors. But when she was in casting for extras, she used to call me up and said, bring your white outfit, because I was a hospital attendant, so I had, I had outfits all stacked up. I said, bring your, bring your white one, okay. Then a couple of weeks later, it says, bring your blue one, okay. What was the blue? That was for like uh, attendance for something else, but not, not hospital related, you know, like workers for something else. Okay. So it, it was like part-time job for me, so you know, I was lucky because I used to get called every week, two weeks, I used to work. I mean, it wasn't great money, but back then it was, you know, it was, it was good for a part-time job because you could bring your books and study because most of the time you're just sitting there doing nothing. So you were still in college at the yeah. time. Okay, and then you graduated <clears throat> and you decided teaching because of quiet and effective governor is not going to work. So you went into law. What happened on the law career? Are you doing these things at the same time? You're doing the, the law studies and acting? Yeah. yeah. And then, and then you, you went through law school, Did you, and you were on the mainland, Cal, Cal Western. Mm -hmm. And were you doing acting over, while you were over there? Or? No, the only, I was thinking of trying to do one, but the, the only one that was playing at that time was, uh, uh, I can't even think of the name, it was the Two Brothers who were detectives. It was based out of San Diego. So I know they were filming over there, so, but I didn't have an agent over there, so I, I said, ah, it's too much work to do that. Plus, you know, going, you know, you know, going to law school, you, just, it, it you don't survive you first study, year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I never read so much in my life. Boy. Okay, so you're, you're, you're going to law school. You kind of got hooked a little bit on the acting, mm. right? I mean, it sounds like you, you kind of liked it. That uh, was a was, good diversion. Okay, gave you some, was it, was it something that was relaxing or was it something that just made life a little better for you or what did you see in the acting? It was a chance to play different characters and do different things and explore different parts of your personality and you know, it's like I, I tell young students when they're with thinking of going into acting, I said, you know, and they said, well, I get nervous. I said, well, I get nervous too, but what you need to do is when you're acting, just tell yourself you're, it's not you making a fool out of yourself. It's the character that you're playing. So if you're playing Joe Smith, Joe Smith's the one that's either looking bad or looking good. It's not you, Bob Jones, that, you know, is the real character. It's you, you can detach character. yourself. And that, that's the way I do it. I mean, so that it's, I can separate myself and just be the character. Okay. Now, eventually, you, you went through law school, mm -hmm. graduated, came back to Hawaii. What was the law career? What, what, what did you look for? What were you interested in? And how mm -hmm. did that work out? That one kind of evolved into doing collection work, or civil work. Uh, I started working for Alex Kim, well, sharing space with Alex Kim, and he was doing coll collection and um, civil matters. So I, he kind of nurtured me and taught me the business. So I ended up just staying in that field and pretty much have done that my whole career. That's been your career, and that's yeah. how we kind of got to know right. each other, too, oh. because we both did the same type right. of, of thing. And you, in that case, who, who, who are your clients, generally speaking? Well, I mean, you know, not names, but... Some collection agencies, some car dealerships, some uh, retail stores. Uh, mostly businesses and Mostly merchants, businesses. That, that type of thing. Yeah. Okay, all right, so you're practicing <clears throat> law. 
what happens to acting? What, what's going on? Is this, are you doing both at the same time? Are, mm -hmm. are you trying, and, and how did that come about? I mean, you came back to Hawaii, passed the bar, now you're a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Why do acting? What, 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 what drew you? I mean, or, or, I mean, is there a connection there? Well, when I came back from law school, I was, I, start, I went back and did film work again. So I was working with Magnum, Jake and the Fat Man, uh, and as an extra? No, no. I, I see. Once you once you qualified to be an actor, you switch unions. So oh. I switched unions. Back then, it was two unions: it was SEG, which was extras, and SAG was actors. I see. So when I qualified for SAG, I just switched. I just went straight into acting and didn't do extra work anymore, and just went into act, the acting. Okay. Gigs. Well, you're going to have to tell us what the difference is. The amount of money you get. <laughs> okay, well that's for a, the for the time you're going to work, the amount of money. I you get. see. So it it so, was worth it to be an to to acting, not extra, because extra was going to take too much time, and you're not going to get, you know, you can't give up your day job for do, doing extra work. I see. So, so. Be, being an extra is kind of like in training to be an actor. Well, back then it was. I mean, now the the pay is a little better for extras and if you work it right some people some people can make a living because especially if you go to the mainland because there's so many different studios running around you can go every day you could be working someplace so you could you could make a living you know okay. over here it's restrictive you got Hawaii Five Up you got Magnum and that's the only two studios running around right now and you got independent films coming in but uh, it's not enough that you're going to be able to make a living. So uh, it's it's kind of hard to justify doing that over here. For full time. Full time. Yeah. So okay, but but you still like to hold on to that. You you like you like the acting career on top or mm. in conjunction with the lawyer career. Right. Was is there anything you found? Uh, that was similar about both. Was there something in both of those roles that you played that were that was similar, or that that worked together, or or, or were they so different that that's what attracted you to them? What what? Well, the similar similarity is you you have to pretty much speak or convey whether you're an attorney or whether you're acting. You you have to convey whatever you're trying to. You're talking to an audience. Yeah. So. Uh, that part is similar. Uh, the acting part is you're, there's nothing on the line. I mean, you, you, you're not, it's, well, I don't do criminal, but if you were doing criminal work and if you don't do it right, somebody goes to jail, you know. But in acting, it's, you know, usually, especially for film, they, they can reshoot it. And as long as you don't do, get reshot too many times, then the director won't get mad at you. But if you keep screwing up, then they say, "Okay, give me somebody else." So <laughs> you need you need to be prepared. And that was that was a good thing about Jack Lord, because his model was one one shot every time. Wow. Because back then it was film. Now now they're doing digital, so it, you can you can kind of fool around with digital and just shoot over it if you want to. But films film once you shoot it, it's it's gone. So it was his money because he was he was pretty much an executive director. Oh. I mean producer. So. He wanted it, you know. He wanted everybody coming prepared. If you were, if you were going to be speaking, you know your roles, know, know your lines, know your blocking, what you're supposed to be doing, so that he could just say, "Okay, we're going to rehearse one time and then we shoot." But uh, now they, because it's digital, they can play around. There's, a there's, bit. there's more people playing around. I see. We did, we did a magnum at the St. Andrews Priory, and. A local actor that lives in L.A., Clyde Kusatsu, was doing a scene with Selleck, except they're shooting from inside the church, shooting Clyde. Selleck standing behind the camera, feeding Clyde lines, and Clyde standing there going, <laughs> Selleck's in the back going, <laughs> and I'm looking at it, I go, oh my God, I mean, and Clyde's trying not to laugh, but you know. Selex feeding the line and making all kind of faces, and finally he just broke up. He just couldn't. And because it's you know digital, they they could 
Yeah, it wasn't that it wasn't major. That cr yeah. critical. It wasn't, uh, yeah, spending. Okay, okay now look, <clears throat> we're going to take a break right now. Okay. One minute break, and we're going to come back, okay? And I want to ask you a little bit about the roles that you played. Okay. Both on screen and theater and in court, okay? We'll be right back. Okay. And aloha, my name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring you the latest and what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation. And we always enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m., here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just gonna scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Welcome back. I am Mark Shklov with Alan Okubo, and we are here talking about his roles as a lawyer and an actor. Mm -hmm. And Alan, uh, you've talked about you're doing two plays at the same time. One is lawyering, and one is acting. And uh, you like them both? Yeah. Lawyers, is that, can you like being a lawyer? Is that a... It's better to be born independently rich, but you know, that not in the cards I'm for everybody. I'm still waiting. Yeah, I know. Okay, all right. So, uh, in, your, in, your, in your attorney role, uh, what was that like? Was that uh, a search for the truth or a search to represent people? Or what is that? And how does that compare with your roles as acting, in acting? Well, to just try to, well, you, you know, it, it, you represent your client and you try to put your client's facts in the best light for the judge. You know, so. And, and that, that's your audience, is yeah. the judge. And I, I, don't, I don't know when you started, but when I started, I had no clue what I was doing. I <laughs> walked into the room and I stood there and the judge looked at me and says, what do you want? I go, <laughs> he says, I think you want a default. Okay. <laughs> says, uh, do you want this? Yes. <laughs> So, so I, the, the judge was like the director in, in yeah, a way. I, he, I mean, I, I, I had point. a learning curve, and it took me a couple of months before I figured out what it was. Well, even in law school, it, it, took me, it took me almost a month to figure out what torts was. I thought it was a baking class. <laughs> I mean, literally, I was thinking, what, what is torts? I mean, you got criminal law, you get civil law, you, and they call it torts. And they never just said it was, it was non-criminal law, but they just call it that fancy word. Okay, now in, in your uh, law career, did having that background in acting help at all? Uh, I guess, because it, if I, if, it, if I didn't have that, I may have been more nervous than I would have normally been. So I kind of could detach myself a little bit and say it's the lawyer talking, not, not me per se, but you know. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Now, I asked you for some of your favorite roles, and you sent me a couple of photos, one of uh, Matsujiro Otani. And let's see if we can have his photo up. Now, who is this, and what, what was this about? Uh, Matsujiro Otani was uh, born in 1890, died in 1972. He was, basically, he was a fishmonger when he, was, came, after, when he came from Japan to Hawaii. And so he used to buy fish at the fish market, go around the island selling it. And then eventually what he did was he bought some land at the Ala Market, Ala Park. Right. And then he brought in all the other independent vendors so that they had a place to sell. So he became like a uh, landlord for all these small independent merchants. And then about night, just about in fact, December 7, 1941, he had remodeled the 
the area and it was going to have a grand opening the day of the bombing. Oh my gosh. He went home that night, FBI came, arrested him, and he was in the internment camp at uh, San Island. Later on, he got transferred to New Mexico, and eventually he went to Colorado. But they arrested him because they felt that he was an organizer and was someone that was of potential danger to the government because he was a person of prominence in organizing these others. And because he was in the fishing business and they were going out on a daily basis that they were communicating with the Japanese while they were out at sea and giving them information. So And he was Japanese. Yes, he was and, Japanese. And the, the photo that we showed was your you dressed up as, as him. As for, the fishmonger. For, that's for what he used role. to just like right. as a fishmonger. Yeah, yeah. And and what what uh, what was your feeling about this uh, play in this role, uh, at, both as an actor and as a lawyer. Well, this is this is a film, a documentary for the. It was put on by the Japanese Chamber of Commerce, and there was this is the second in the series. There was another one I did a couple of years before. I can't really remember who the person I was at that time, but uh, the reason they trying to archive all these things is to show what happened to the internments over here. Because everybody knows what happened to the internments uh, in the mainland. So there's a big site now at Lule that they've uncovered and they're trying to, they've made it into a national uh, park area. And the land was owned by Monsanto. Monsanto donated it to the, I'm not sure if they donated it to the JCC or to another nonprofit. And they're, eventually it's gonna get cleaned up and have tours and all that going over there. There's not many, there's no surviving buildings. There's surviving concrete areas where some buildings were. Because all the, if you look at some photos of uh, the Lua Lua Le campsite, it was in this desolate valley and it was pretty much just like a desert. And, and that's where they brought uh, prominent Japanese and interned them. Not only Japanese, Italians and Germans also. And it's interesting <clears throat> to know uh, that Mr. Otani's kids went on to fight in the U.S. Army. Mm -hmm. And uh, his uh, family ran the market while he was gone. His son, Akira, joined the 100th Battalion. Mm -hmm. And just before he was going to go to Cassio, Italy, which the unit that went there pretty much got wiped out. Yeah, just a minute. He got called into the officer's candidate school at the last minute, so mm. he locked out as far as having to go. Uh, his other three sons also were in the Army, but they weren't overseas, as far as I know. I'm not sure. There was not too much history on that. And another son was here doing uh, broadcast intelligence work for the, in Hawaii. Oh, you know, maybe there are some lessons there for mm -hmm. us to learn as we go forward here in the United States. Uh, you also sent me a photo of... Uh, oh, one, one more thing yeah. about Otani. After he came back from internment, he started United Fishing, Fishing Agency, which oh, okay. is where the fish market is now. So, you know, so anytime they buy fish, they're buying it from United Fish Market, which is a fishing agency, which is started by him. So. And li life went on for him, and yeah. he said he put it behind him, moved yeah. on. Great. Yeah. You, you, you sent me a photo of Erroneous. Erroneous. Right. What was that about? Let's, uh, there's Erroneous, yeah. and you in that role. What was, who is Erroneous, and what word is that from? Okay, uh, this is from a play, a uh, funny thing happened on the way to the forum that was at the uh, Manoa Valley Theater. Uh, Ronius was, uh, not a, I think he was either Greek or Roman, I wasn't even, couldn't, in fact, I think it was Greek, but his job was to roam around looking for his children, his twin son and daughter that were stolen from him in infancy. And Sudalus, who is a, uh, was played by Zero Mostel in the movie and in the play, uh, was, uh, was played here by Ren Helford, but his, his tricking him into leaving so that they could use his house to do some other things. 
Mm -hmm. so, nefarious. Thing. Yes, nefarious. Oh, so okay. he ended up roaming seven times around Rome, the seven times, seven hills of Rome, looking for his kids. Which the good part is what he actually found them. Or something. at the end, at, yeah, at the it, end. it ended up the his son was a captain in the Roman army. And his daughter was a concubine, and they were going to get married. And then they found out that they were actually brother and sister, and that split that part up. And then he found them, and they, everybody lived happily ever after. So you, you've done <clears throat> drama and comedy both. Mm -hmm. And uh, which do you prefer, or do you like them both? I like them both. I mean, it's two different mediums. Uh, drama, you get, you can let out different parts of your emotions and feelings and convey them. Comedy is, you know, again, a different part of your emotions and, you know, so it's, it's two different mediums, but both of them are fun. Now, talk about fun, hmm. all right? You also do commercials, and I see them when I watch TV at night, okay? Hmm. And I want to ask you about these commercials. I'm dying to know something. Vacations Hawaii, you do one, and it shows you in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Is that, did you really go to Vegas? I mean, is that yeah. really what happened? They, they, sh they shipped you to Vegas to do a commercial? Yeah. You got paid for that? Yeah. What was that like? What was that experience like? That was, that was fun, because uh, we left Friday, came back Tuesday. So we had to, we only worked two out of four days, so, you know. So you're really having the experience, too. Yeah. And and as part of that, I mean, did they film you doing <coughs> doing those things, or... Did you get to do those on your own? And then for the commercial, actually had to act. Well, the commercial part, we're acting. And then the rest of the time, we do whatever we wanted to do for the other two days. So they weren't filming you actually yeah. gambling and stuff. That was just all play acting. Uh, but you knew how to do it. Yeah, well, I don't, as long as it's not my chips, it's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, now, I want to ask you, just before we close, to tell us what have you learned about acting and law in your career? Well, whatever you're going to do, whether it's acting or law, uh, commit yourself to what you're going to do so that whichever one you're doing or both or whatever, when you're doing it, you're doing it to the best you can. And we were, there's, there's a lot of theaters now in, in Hawaii, and uh, there's more opportunity for people to get into acting over here now. So it's, it's a good opportunity for people, younger people, to jump in. And, and the good thing now, I've, I've seen a lot of high school plays recently in the last five, five years, and the talent level has just gone up so much. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Would you tell those uh, young actors to become lawyers also and do mm. the same same roles that you have played? Or? I, tell, I tell everybody who wants to be a lawyer, says be a dentist. You get paid <laughs> to inflict pain. <laughs> okay, well, all right, Alan. So I suppose both of us will come back eventually and play different roles, uh, dentist and neurosurgeon or something like that. And uh, I appreciate you coming today, learning about your dual roles and what you've played in acting and as an attorney. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Aloha. Thank you.